fresh coffee in the morning, <clears throat> but I better enjoy it now while I can. Because I don't know what's going to happen to America. I don't know. Now grab a Bible right now. Because we are, this is amazing. It's almost like what's happened today is jumping off the pages of the book of Amos. The Amos prophecy. If you go to the fourth chapter, verses six through nine, before I read it, let me share with you what's been going on uh, today. San Bernardino, California, seeks bankruptcy. San Bernardino, California, became the third California city in less than a month. Repeat, the third California city in less than a month to seek bankruptcy protection. With officials saying the financial situation has become so dire that it could not cover payroll through the summer. They have no choice but file bankruptcy. Well, here's what happens when you do that. All of your uh, bondholders, people, rich people that the city's borrowed money from, at high interest rate returns, are going to be left holding the bag. These folks have just lost their shirt. Oh, and by the way, the city employees with retirement benefits, they're no longer have to be paid to them anymore because those contracts will be null and void as of the finalization of the bankruptcy. Now, that doesn't mean the city couldn't go back in and restructure a new uh, retirement plan for those city's workers. But what they're going to do is they're going to stiff all the vendors and they're going to stiff all the bondholders. It happened in Stockton, California. And now here it is in San Bernardino. And folks, what about yesterday? Scranton, Pennsylvania. It's, this isn't just a California problem. This isn't a California dreaming. This isn't what it is. You also got Scranton, Pennsylvania. The, 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 the mayor slashes the workers pay to minimum wage, police officers, firefighters, garbage collectors, and all public workers have had their pay slashed to $7.25 an hour. Scranton is broke. It's getting ugly. It's beginning, folks. It's beginning. There's no more money left. But the president and the Congress are up there twiddling their thumbs and pointing fingers at each other on who's going to raise it. They want to raise taxes. They want to raise taxes now. Folks, record foreclosures in 2010 of homes. We broke that record in 2011. We're doubling breaking that record in 2012. This is not the summer or the of the era of recovery. This is an absolute discovery that America is broke, busted, and disgusted. And I'm, wait a minute. Is there a reason, Pastor? Is there a reason? Go now, Amos. Let's read it together. And then let me share with you some more information. Folks, the black horse is galloping through the land right across America. It might as well get on Route 66 and just gallop across the country because America needs to repent of our sins. I'm going to keep preaching it, folks. I'm going to keep preaching until Jesus, I'm looking up. Matter of fact, I was telling uh, some folks yesterday, I said, I'm starting to get a, a stiff neck from looking up for my redemption's drawing nigh. I keep looking up for the second coming. I keep looking for Christ to come and get the bride and take us away. But I don't know the day nor the hour. I don't know the day or the hour. But let me say this. Let me read to you now out of the book of Amos. Amos chapter 4, verse 6. And I also have given you cleanliness of teeth in all your cities and want of bread in all your places. Yet have you not returned unto me, saith the Lord, and I also have withholding the rain from you. 56% of America is in a drought. Thousands of fish just died in Minnesota. 56% 
of America is in a drought, including northern Indiana. You can't find a green blade of grass here in Lafayette, Indiana, unless you have a sprinkler system, and then the grass is thirsty. I'm serious. I'm serious. Are you serious? And oh, by the way, corn, corn, are you talking about corn? It's withering away, folks. It's withering. It's withering. It's withering. Why? Let's read it. Amos chapter 4. The Amos prophecy for America. I'm speaking. Now, I know the whole world's in a world of trouble. But I'm telling you, America, listen to me. This is the most important time to repent as a nation in our life. Um, but are we going to do it? Here's what the Bible says in Amos 4. And I also have given you cleanliness of teeth in all of your cities and want of bread in all your places. Yet have you returned unto me, saith the Lord, and I also have withholden the rain from you. When there were yet three months to the harvest, and I, what is it right now? This is July. Harvest is August, September, uh, three months. We're three months from the harvest. And God said, and I've withholding the rain from you. And when there were yet three months to the harvest, and I caused it to rain upon one city, and I caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained, it not withered. So two or three cities. How many cities filed bankruptcy in California? How many cities... So two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye, have ye, have you returned unto me, saith the Lord? There want California. Are you serious? Three cities have filed bankruptcy. People are going to be are looking for work from wandering around, looking for something to eat or to drink. City to city to city. It's happening. Look at this. I have smitten you with the blasting and mildew. Oh, it's coming. When your garments and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased, the palmer worm devoured them, yet have not, ye have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Now I know. For those of you biblical scholars and theologians and reconstructionists of biblical scriptures and meditations of deep inner interpretations of Bible prophecy and world history, I know you're thinking that this is Amos preaching just to Israel for just that time. I know you're thinking that, and that's your problem. You can't see that the prophetic word of God is in a constant state of rapidly progressing toward the apocalyptic day, the coming of the Lord. That's why most Reconstructionists believe all of the Bible has already taken place, including Revelation. Did you know that? They don't even believe Revelation is the coming events. They believe it was all symbolic for its day. I don't even know why they even read the Bible. They basically don't believe it. But I don't want to get I don't want to go down that path. I'm saying it because I already know what the responses are going to be. That Hosea was not talking about today. Well, Isaiah talked about a coming savior. He said that uh, the government of the world will be upon his shoulders. Isaiah said it. Guess what? He said that a child was going to be born. He was talking right to the Israelites of that day. His name shall be Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Prince of Peace. Now, if you want to look at it and say, well, he was talking to them in that day. Good. Then why did it happen 800 years later? See, you've got to rightly divide this thing. You're not understanding. So I'm telling you right now, Amos 4, 6 through 9, this scripture is in my spirit. I know who he was talking to at that time, but I also know who he's talking to now in this time. And this Scripture jumped off the page in my studies this morning when I heard of the third city in San Bernardino, California. When I heard that third city, I said, oh, there's a scripture I know I read 
where it talks about three cities. Well, it's, here we are. Are you saved? Are you saved? Are you born again? I want you to give your life to Jesus Christ. 